Welcome to Lecture Online, and now let's see if we understand all that we saw in the last 10 videos or so by doing a nice example. So what we have here is we have a double slit. The distance between the slits is 0.1 millimeter. Light shines through it at a wavelength of 600 nanometers, and there's a screen two meters away. Two questions. First question, what is the distance from the central maximum to the first minimum? This distance right here in terms of uh, what is y equal to and secondly at the halfway point between the central maximum and the first minimum it doesn't matter if we go up or down it's of course perfect symmetry here what will be the intensity at this location and let's say that the intensity uh, of a single beam coming in let's say it's equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, let's say watts per square meter okay based upon that intensity what will be the intensity at that location Okay, the first thing we're going to do is find the distance to the, to the first minimum. And so what we need to do there is determine the extra distance traveled. So right here, this would be the extra distance traveled, which is equal to x2 minus x1, x2 being the distance uh, traveled by the second beam, x1 the distance by the first beam. And that can be defined as d sine theta, d being the hypotenuse of this little triangle here and this angle in here that would be the angle theta which is the same as the angle theta right there okay since we don't know what the angle is we can say for small angles and this will be a small angle this would be equal to d times the tangent of theta which by definition is equal to the opposite over the adjacent y divided by l so what we can say is that the extra distance traveled will be simply the ratio of y divided by the distance to the screen and y is what we're looking for secondly to find the first minimum that demands that the phase difference right here would be equal to a half a wavelength remember when the phase difference is a half a wavelength then the two waves are exactly 180 degrees out of phase and there'll be destructive interference and nothing will be seen there so what we do then is we set the extra distance traveled that we determine geometrically to the extra distance traveled in terms of the number of wavelengths or fraction of a wavelength. With other words, we set the uh, d sine theta equal to what it requires to get a complete destructive interference situation right there, which just means that it has to be equal to a half a wavelength. And since d sine theta can be written as d times tangent of theta, oop, let me correct this. This is not y over l, but this is d times y over l. I forgot the d in there. So the extra distance travel will be d times y over l, which is equal to lambda divided by 2. And this equation we can solve for y, which will be the first answer we're looking for. So therefore, y will be equal to lambda times l divided by 2 times d. Lambda is, did I make it 600 nanometers? All right. So lambda is 600 nanometers, which is, let me write it in terms of meters. So 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. L, it would be 2 meters. And then we have 2 times D, which would be 0 0.0001 meter, which is a tenth of a millimeter. Now with a calculator, we will figure out what Y is equal to. So we have 600 e to the 9 minus times 2 divided by 2 divided by 0 0.0001 equals and it would be 6 times 10 to the minus 3 which is 6 millimeters so 6 millimeters is the distance from the central maximum to the first minimum all right now for the second question what would be the intensity at the halfway point between the central maximum and the first minimum so what we're going to do is we're going to approach it slightly differently. We're going to try and find the phase angle and from the f and in terms of theta, and then we're going to put the phase angle in here and calculate the intensity. So to find the phase angle, we need to find the sine of theta. So here we can see, uh, well, let's go ahead and put it in the equation right there. So we're looking for the phase difference, and that is equal to d times the sine of theta divided by lambda times 360 degrees so there'll be a fraction probably of 360 degrees well if it's a halfway point and the fraction will probably be hmm, 90 degrees well let's find that so sine of theta well we don't have the sine of theta but we know for small angles the sine of theta is equal to the tangent of theta which is equal to y over l so this can be written as the phase difference is equal to d times y divided by l 
we still have the lambda here, and then we have 360 degrees. So we can actually find the phase difference in terms of y over l rather than the sine of theta. Okay, so let's now plug in the values. So we have phi, which is equal to the, the uh, distance between the slits, 0 0.0001 meter, times y, which we just figured out, which is 6 millimeters, 0 0.006 meters, divided by 2 meters for the distance of the screen, and 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters for the wavelength, and we multiply that times 360 degrees. All right, again, with a calculator, so we already have that, millimeters times 0 0.0001, divide by 2, and divide by 600 e to the 9 minus equals, and we get 0 0.5. So phi is equal to 0 0.5 times 360 degrees. So the phase difference here is 180 degrees. Oh, but guess what? I was starting to worry here for a moment. Remember, I plugged in the distance 6 millimeters, which is the distance to the first minimum, which ended up being half of 360 degrees or 180 degrees, which is a complete destructive interference situation. And that's, of course, correct when we use the six millimeters. But I'm supposed to find it to the halfway point. The halfway point means that it would be three millimeters. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace the six millimeters by three millimeters. Because after all, I was looking for, oh, and we'll convert that to meters, so 0 0.003 meters which means that this would not come out to 0 0.25 times 360 degrees, which is a quarter of 360 degrees, which means the phase difference now will be 90 degrees. So that would be the phase difference that the two beams would have when they get to the halfway point between the central maximum and the first minimum. And that makes sense. That, uh, so notice how when we do this, we can really start understanding how this all works. Okay, now that we have the phase difference, we can now find the intensity. So now we're going to find, use this equation right here in the red box. So we say that the intensity is equal to four times the original intensity or the intensity of any single beam, which was given here to be five times 10 to the minus six watts per square meter. And we then multiply that times the cosine squared of phi, the phase difference divided by two. So this would be equal to Five, oh, don't forget the four. Four times five times 10 to the minus six watts per square meter times the cosine squared of 90 degrees divided by two. All right, again, we need a calculator for that. So we take 90 degrees divided by two, which is 45 degrees. Take the cosine of 45 degrees, which is 0.707. We square that, which is 0.5. Multiply times 4, which is 2, so it would be 2 times the intensity of a single beam, which is 2 times 5e to the 6 minus, which of course is 1 times 10 to the minus 5. So this is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 5 watts per square meter, which would be the intensity of the light at this very location right there. Turns out it will be double the intensity of a single beam at that location, okay? And that's how we do that. That's how we find, first we find the distance to any point, in this case, the first minimum. Then we find the phase difference by using this y over l. Remember, first I put in the distance to the first minimum, which meant we would have had a phase difference of 180 degrees, which makes sense. Then I plug in half the distance, because that's what we're interested in, three millimeters instead of six millimeters, and then we get, um, a quarter of a full phase, so that means 90 degrees. When we plug the 90 degrees in there, of course, don't forget, the equation requires us to divide by two, so we get the cosine squared of 45 degrees, which is 0.5 times four times the intensity of a single beam. And that's how we calculate the intensity anywhere along the screen. Okay, hopefully that will clear things up for us, and I'll do a few more examples so they'll get uh, kind of a comfort feeling of how to work with these kind of equations.